information about the many departments here at Fordham. So take it away, Dana Carey. Okay, testing. Okay, good. Hi, my name is Trudy Robson. I'm the Senior Associate Director for the Office of Career Services here at the Rose Hill Campus. Our office basically helps students prepare for internships and full-time opportunities. Um, we host over probably about 50,000 opportunities on our job board with 20 plus different industries where we help students with career counseling, preparation, and working with a vast amount of employers that come to our campus to basically get students in for opportunities such as internships and jobs and career fairs as well. So if you have questions, you can definitely ask them and I'll give you more details. Thank you. Um, and welcome again. My name is Judy Rothschild Best. I'm the Assistant Director of IT Customer Care, which is our health desk. Um, I can answer any questions you have about IT on campus, our free help and support, part time jobs that we have available, including internships with IT, um, and any other questions that you have about your technology on campus. Hi, I'm Barbara Emma Bachman. I'm representing Student Financial Services, which is, um, I'm Assistant Director, um, which is financial aid, uh, student accounts, and enrollment services. So that would be your billing and then paying for um, college. So if you have any questions, you can definitely ask. Thank you. Hi, I'm Lori Palmer. I'm the Housing Operations Specialist here at the Office of Residential Life at the Rose Hill Campus. And I handle all the assignments for the newly incoming students and also our returning students. I see all these smiling faces at me. Uh, so um, we, we are looking forward to having the students. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, welcome to Fordham. Um, I'm Mary Ann O'Shea. I'm the Assistant Director of University Health Services here at Bronx, Rose Hill Campus, and Lincoln Center in New York City. Um, we have a wide variety of services that we can uh, offer your child. Um, we have a whole uh, web page that you could look at, but any specific questions, please give us a call. At Rose Hill, we're open seven days a week, and Lincoln Center, six days a week. Children are able to come to either health service center, whichever they need. And welcome again. Thank you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Janan Paul. I'm here to represent athletics. And I have the pleasure of serving as one of our senior associate athletic directors and senior woman administrator for Fordham Athletics. 
Uh, I oversee a number of our varsity sports programs, a number of our units, as well as all of our recreational sports. So that would be club sports and intramural sports. And I oversee our Ramp Fit Center, which is our fitness center here on campus. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Robert Pitzer. I'm the Director of Public Safety for Rose Hill and our Westchester campus. I'd be happy to answer any questions you have related to public safety. Hi everyone, welcome, and it is so nice to see all these faces without masks. Um, I'm Joan Kappa, I'm Senior Director of Campus Ministry here at Rose Hill, and I also serve up at the Westchester campus. We also have uh, Campus Ministry down at Lincoln Center. Uh, we uh, have many opportunities for students to get involved, students who are exploring their faith, students of different faith traditions. If students want to get involved in Catholic liturgies, we have retreats, we have service opportunities, we do pastoral outreach, bereavement counseling. So um, if you need us, you can find us at McKinley, I think through October, and then we're going to be in that new building. Look for us. <laughs> Hi, I'm Mary Burns. I'm the Director of Disability Services. Um, we offer accommodations for students uh, with any type of disability, whether it's um, physical, mental health, um, learning, you name it, we will work with your student for accommodations. You can um, Google us and see how, I mean, we can have a talk to the bars too, but you can Google us and you'll see that we have an application for your student to fill out, and then you can call us for an intake anytime this summer. Hi everyone, my name is Jeffrey Ng and I'm the director for our Office for Counseling and Psychological Services. Welcome to Fordham, welcome to New York City, for those of you who are not from New York, and welcome back to in-person gatherings. It's so nice to see real faces, face-to-face, um, -face, in person, not through a screen. Um, our office is here to support um, our students' emotional, mental, psychological health and well-being. And we do so through a variety of services, um, clinical services, prevention services, as well as educational programming. Um, some of the clinical services that we offer include uh, individual and group counseling and psychotherapy, um, psychiatric evaluations, um, and medication management. Um, we also provide consultation to essentially all members of the Fordham community about um, students that they may be concerned about from a mental health perspective, um, and, and lastly, we also provide uh, referrals to students to off-campus providers when it's warranted. Happy to answer any questions you all may have later. Hello everyone, my name is Juan Carlos Mazos. Uh, I'm the Assistant Vice President for Student Affairs for Diversity and Inclusion, and I oversee the Office of Multicultural Affairs both at Rose Hill and at Lincoln Center. Um, our office is here to ensure that all students feel welcome and valued. Uh, and included on campus. So we do that through a number of initiatives. Some of those are through training and workshops that we do for student leaders, but also for students in the general student population. Um, we also run a number of committees, cultural committees to our department, um, which provides students with student leadership opportunities, and they do programming all year round. We have some Instagram takeovers happening between now and August, so it's really exciting, um, as well as us working with collaboratively a number of different departments on campus to look at identity and culture. Uh, and many of the ways that happens is through speakers, panels, movie series, so lots of events and lots of things for students to get involved with um, for, with our office. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Pino Gonzalez. I'm the Director of University Transportation here for uh, Fordham University. Um, essentially what we do is we offer an in-campus shuttle service which connects the Lincoln Center campus and the Roseville campus. Um, students are eligible for free passes if they have classes um, if they live in one, one campus and have classes in another, and vice versa. We also offer outbound airport shuttles to the airports for the students as well. And, we, and lastly, we offer work-study jobs um, for students that have driver's licenses and want to work part-time. All right, thank you everybody. So to start the question portion of the panel today, we're gonna to start with a question for dining services. Can you share a little bit of information about how food allergies are addressed on campus? Absolutely. Uh, so we're very cognizant of the various realities that exist and the greater prevalence that we see within the general uh, population. 
So we, designed, we have devised several programs to address that, one of which is a, uh, an allergen-free station downstairs in the marketplace. It is called True Balance. That station has no ingredients that contain any of the eight most popular allergens. So wheat, dairy, uh, shellfish, etc. Uh, that station is also kept separate from the other stations, so there's no cross-contamination. They have their own set of equipment, their own set of small wares and, and, and uh, devices that are used to serve. Um, and so they are, it's all kept separate. There's also various uh, opportunities around campus that are grab and go, which are prepackaged that um, address that as well. Um, and then if you have any particular concerns or if you just want to know more information, we do have a dietitian on staff full time. Um, she works with students all day long, all semester long. And so if you're not even just looking at um, any food allergies or anything related to that, you just want advice on how to eat properly on campus or to have dietary consultation, she is here for that. So the best thing you can do at this time is to email her at ramhealth at fordham.edu. Um, introduce yourself and let, them, let her know what your questions are. She will set up a time to have a meeting, uh, either in person, virtual, or just take her off with a phone call. And she will work very closely with any student that has uh, such need, including doing a walkthrough of dining locations to point out opportunities um, to get the types of food that a student is looking for, um, or even work closely with the chef and the management team to help create the specific items and dishes that are helpful to that student. So, we have a variety of ways to assist any student with special dietary needs or even just general health. Um, so please, the first thing is just to reach out to our dietitian and open that line of communication. It will really help um, get the ball rolling so that when your student comes onto campus, they don't go for the first week or two and not know where to go or what to do. Now is the time to establish that communication and to get that relationship going. She's, she was here today, so please feel free to reach out to her as soon as possible and uh, begin that conversation. Thank you. Next question is for IT. How is the Wi-Fi around campus? Hello. What a wonderful question. Um, Wi-Fi around campus is excellent. You should really have service wherever you are. If you're in the residence halls or in a classroom and you find that it doesn't meet your needs, you should always give us a call at the help desk. Um, again, it's called IT Customer Care. We are open 24-7. Um, we have our standard support hours during the day. Um, and when you call, we'll be able to have somebody come out and survey the area and see if we can do anything to improve the service. So that's both for residence halls and for academic areas as well as even some of the green spaces on campus. So we'd love to hear from you. Not about a problem. <laughs> Thank you. Next question is for the Office of Disability Services. Do students need appointments to meet with the Office of Disability Services? Well, it depends on what, the, what it's for. Um, if it's an intake, yes, you need an appointment. If it's, um, if you're coming in for a test, yes, you need an appointment. But that's something that we go over with all the students after they do an intake with us. We tell them how that, that works. Um, if it's an emergency, no, they don't need an appointment. Somebody will, will help you. Um, we'll figure it out. Next question is for health services. What happens if a student gets sick on campus and what is the nearest hospital? So if a student got sick on campus here at Rose Hill, what would happen is um, we would, if it was an emergency situation off hours, they would call public safety um, and they would get fumes, which is our volunteer ambulance. They're all certified EMT. Um, and they would take them to the hospital. Um, we have all numbers listed on how you can contact them. Um, if we're on campus for health services, please have your student call, and we can also see them and triage. There are a lot of urgent cares that are local that are on our website if we're closed. The same thing with Lincoln Center. It's a little bit different in the fact that they don't have the volunteer um, fume skits that transport to the hospital, so you would call public safety. Um, Mount Sinai is also um, very close to, the, to um, the campus. Thank you. Next 
next question is for intercampus transportation. Are Ram Band passes free, and how does one get passes? It's a good question. So, Ram Band passes are free if students are eligible for the passes. Eligibility is based on where you live and then where you have classes. And so, for example, if a student is living on the Rose Hill campus and has a class at the Lincoln Center campus, they are eligible for passes. Passes are also free if a student has an unpaid internship in the city. But they'll just have to reach out to Career Services. Career Services reaches out to us and then we'll administer passes to the student. And lastly, they would get passes um, at the beginning of every week, and the passes would go direct to their account. And if there's any issues, such as they registration for a class, they could always reach out to our office, and we'll be more than happy to come with them. Thank you. Next question is for academic records. How do students report their AP scores and get credit for them? Sure, so when students sign up to actually take an AP exam, they have the ability to designate whether they want the score sent to various institutions. That's the most common way that reports are sent. As soon as the score is reported, it, it then gets sent to the various recipients. But sometimes students don't do that, and then they go to the AP, the College Board's website, and have an additional score report sent to Fordham. The important thing to keep in mind is that um, there are, the process is sort of two parts. First, they have to send the score to us, and then at a certain point, summer, the scores are converted into credits. So what we ask students to do is, uh, in the registration tutorials that they view, it tells them how to go and actually see whether they have their scores, in which case everything is fine, and then later in the summer the actual corresponding credits will appear. Um, and if they have any questions about how their AP credits actually count towards their curriculum or what they should take or shouldn't take, that's a question uh, for their summer first year academic coordinator or SPAC, the advisor whom they're all working with. Thank you. Next question is for residential life. Can you tell us a little bit about moving on to campus and how that works? Uh, yes, yeah, so um, right now we are um, getting all of your uh, students' housing applications in and uh, we are going to be doing our housing assignments during the month of July and then once we get the housing assignments ready to be sent out, every student is um, given a move-in time for the move-in day. And they are staggered out so we could um, have a flow of traffic going you know, on campus um, pretty easily. Um, and on move-in day, you guys do not have to move anything in. We have the students that are helping us out, move everything into the students' uh, dorm room residential hall. All you need to do is put your student's name on the belongings with the residential hall and their room number. So it's an exciting day. It really is like one of my best days here and everything is full of excitement. Everybody's just, you know, ready to move in and everything. And then we have other orientations on that day for the students to attend and the parents to attend. And then there comes a time towards the end of the day that we do have to ask that you guys depart and we have your students here at home with us. So. It's an exciting day and we're looking forward to it, so thank you. Thank you. Next question is for public safety. Is the campus a safe environment for students? Yes, the campus is very safe. I think Dean Rogers had mentioned earlier about 96% of the students feel safe on campus on the last climate survey. I'll give you a general overview of some of our campus safety programs. We have a laid approach to security. Our first layer is our perimeter security, which is staffed by our contract guards. As you came on campus today, you may have noticed them. Um, it, it's a, an outside vendor that we use. They're all licensed by New York State and trained daily by our supervisors. They're out on a perimeter post uh, 365 days a year, seven days a week, 24 hours a day. The primary responsibility is monitoring access control to campus to see who's coming on, to see that the right people, uh, people who have reason to be here or coming onto campus. The next layer that we have are our patrol leaders. They're all predominantly retired law enforcement. They're our frontline supervisors. You'll see them, you may have seen them today driving around and in patrol on and off campus in a white, uh, clearly marked public safety vehicle. The third layer are our duty supervisors. Our duty supervisors are all retired ranking members of law enforcement, all which have over 20 years experience. So it's a very, very experienced uh, uh, force. Uh, they're responsible for overall supervision of that tour. Uh, on campus, we have over 300 video.
video cameras. They're strategically located throughout campus, and they can be monitored back on base. Um, as you're walking around also today, they have seen our yellow phone system, our blue light cameras. Our blue light uh, phone system is a one-button system that dials back directly right into our public safety base. Uh, there's someone, in, again, that, that uh, base is manned 24 hours a day, uh, seven days with 365 days a year. They have a 360-degree camera on top of that yellow pole. So the supervisor will be able to uh, uh, assess the situation and send the necessary resources. We have an 85-acre campus and we have five cars patrolling, so I'd like to say that uh, if you need help, it will be there literally in seconds. Our resident halls, our uh, card access, I think uh, Dean Rogers mentioned that also. There's uh, video cameras in the lobby. We do staff it with a, a public safety guard from 10 at night till 6 in the morning. Um, again, the same thing would be access control, uh, making sure that the right people are coming in. Prior to that, um, it is staffed by the residential life folks from, uh, from 6 to 10 p.m. Uh, okay, all our resident halls, they're uh, fully sprinkled and uh, central monitored with their fire alarm systems that go directly and uh, we test our systems daily uh, and we comply with all New York uh, Fire Department uh, safety codes uh, regarding uh, uh, fire inspections and fire drills. Thank you. Next question is for athletics. Can you share some information regarding club sports and when do trials happen? Sure. Um, so we are fortunate enough here at Fordham University that we have a wide array of different athletic opportunities for students. Uh, oftentimes we have individuals that start here at Fordham University, played competitively in high school, didn't necessarily have aspirations to play on a Division I level, but want to make sure that they still have the competitive environment of being a part of the team, still have the team environment that exists. Uh, while competing in their sport. So we actually have two tiered levels. They can either compete in a club perspective, which means that they represent Fordham University and they compete against other club teams. Uh, locally, quite a few of our sports programs do well, like our hockey team, uh, that have the opportunity to leave the state and compete against hockey teams uh, around the country. Uh, we also then have intramural sports that are for students that still want that um, competitive environment but want to do it without the same time commitment that is associated with club sports. So typically you'll see a group of students that will come together either with individuals from their floor or individuals that are friends with each other and create a team. So from a club perspective, we have club baseball, crew, hockey, men's lacrosse, women's lacrosse, men's rugby, women's rugby, sailing, men's soccer, women's soccer, softball, squash, tennis, that is co-ed, and then men's ultimate and women's ultimate frisbee. And then from an intramural perspective, we have basketball, dodgeball, flag football, volleyball, kickball, soccer, and softball. So as you can see, uh, quite a number of things to keep our students active. Um, and they share spaces with our varsity sports, so our same facility staff uh, works collectively with them. Um, and I think that's it. Tryouts with another question. Typically tryouts take place at the beginning of each academic year. Um, and then if you're a spring sport at the beginning of the spring semester, many of our teams will be out during the club fairs in order to advertise for their specific sports. For some of our more competitive sports, um, there are some information that will go out and we do have coaches that are involved that are actively recruiting current high school students or actively recruiting students once they arrive here on campus to become members of the team. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is for career services. How does the university help students get internships? Now I'm going testing again. Um, yeah, so this is a really good question. Um, we really do encourage our students to really start early. Um, so usually by the first year, depending on what school your son or daughter is in, either Gabelli School of Business or Fordham College, it different requirements in regards to an internship process. Um, career Services basically works with the student individually to discuss what those options look like because if you're looking for an uncredited or accredited internship, it's very different for each school. So what we do is we work with them to have discussion about what their interests are, you know, what are their passions, what are they seeking. Um, that's how we really kind of help them with looking into 
do Handshake. Handshake is our career management system that hosts over all the internships that I talked about earlier today, which really helps students connect and navigate. So we'll help them with their resume, their cover letter, how do you prepare for those opportunities, and what the employers are actively looking for. Um, we have a host of networking and career fair events, which we really do encourage students to go to talk to employers so they can navigate the process to learn more about the internship process because every employment opportunity is very different for internship requirements. So this is how we really navigate them. If they look to do credit for Cabelli School of Business, there's also another supplemental program, which is the Personal Professional Development Center. They also work with Cabelli School of Business and our Fort College students we primarily work towards with helping them understand if they have to connect with their department for credit and internship opportunities. Thank you. Next question is for Campus Ministry. What services does Campus Ministry provide to those students who practice a different faith? Great. Um, well, as the Campus Minister who is the advisor to most of the faith-based student clubs, we do everything we can to support students of any faith who come here to Fordham. As a part of a Jesuit university with, an, with a, a mission to educate men and women for others, we believe that part of that is to help students become who they are, to become, to embrace other students. So we um, often collaborate on programs, often support different programs that students have. We have an interfaith retreat. We have various programs throughout the year, um, common grounds. We talk about uh, the intersection of faith and, and college student life. So we do a lot for students who, and, and a student might come and say, well, gee, I'm a student of this faith and you don't have anything. We welcome students to come to let us know how we can support them because college is a time of great spiritual exploration and we want to be there and to let them know that although Fordham is a Catholic university, we support and encourage and embrace students of any faith tradition. So I hope that helps. Thank you. Next question is for Counseling and Psychological Services. If I notice my student is having more stress than I think they can handle, who should I contact? That's a great question. Um, and my, my immediate answer to that question, um, thinking in an idealistic way, is that hopefully they can contact really anybody on campus. Right? Any peer, any RA, RD, any um, faculty member, advisor, TA, etc. And the reason I, I share that with all of you is because, um, you know, we really envision our support for students from a mental health perspective as being comprehensive and integrated um, and, and holistic, right? And so what that means is that we want everyone that's a part of the Fordham community to be involved in supporting their students if they are experiencing, you know, overwhelming stress or mental health distress. Um, that's a very long-winded answer to the question. If you want to have them reach out to our office, um, obviously, you can just have, encourage them to pick up the phone, to call us, to schedule an appointment. Um, they can also um, email us to schedule an appointment, and obviously now they can walk into our office um, to schedule an appointment. Um, if they're experiencing a mental health emergency or crisis, we also have walk-in hours available for students to be seen right away during our business hours. Thank you. Next question is for IT. Is there any specific software that we need to purchase for laptops before coming on the campus? Thank you for the question. Um, there isn't any software that you need to purchase. We do have Microsoft Office 365 available for free through our website, um, either for download or for use with online services in the cloud. Uh, there are definitely other programs that we have for free as well, um, and with it, when they're related to your classes, uh, we'll help you install them in IT customer care, such as if you need access and you have a Mac, we can help you install VirtualBox on your computer if you bring it to our IT Customer Care Center and run Windows so that you'll be able to access that program, access, um, for the business school during your sophomore year. Great, thank you. Next question is for public safety. Is the area around campus safe as well? Um, New York is not unlike any other big city around the world. Um, as you travel around, you have to be aware of your surroundings. All the core training with the incoming uh, freshmen, and we talk about safe travel. We talk about things about walking, 
traveling in groups, traveling in those areas, not taking uh, uh, cutouts or, or alleyways and things of that nature, um, traveling on well-lit streets that are frequent, frequented by a lot of people. Just basically being aware of your surroundings. Surroundings. Don't become distracted. One of the major things that you see out there are people with their head buried in their cell phone. We'll talk about that. Becoming distracted, wearing AirPods or earbuds. Uh, we we'll talk about things about uh, like don't flash, flash money. Don't, uh, don't wear fancy jewelry or don't flash fancy jewelry. Things of that nature. Those are the things that we discuss to get uh, safe travel in, in, around the area of New York City. The different ways of traveling. In the Belmont uh, neighborhood, we put out a patrol vehicle from 8 at night to 5 in the morning. It's staffed by one of our supervisors. And they're there basically to look out for the students and to get them home safely. That's their primary function. We put it out, like I said, it's a late night car. It's from 8 at night to 5 in the morning. We also provide a neighborhood shuttle van free of charge. That also runs from 8 at night to 5 in the morning. Travels around a predefined route in the Arthur Avenue Belmont community. This stops uh, that it stops at. And Travels along the route, like I said. We have an app for it called Translope, which is a nice feature where a student can be inside a nice, uh, safe, dry location and wait uh, to when the van is about to approach. And they can time it and see the van can step outside. Uh, also, three of the stops are located in front of our off campus housing, where we stand a security guard out front of uh, building a booth from, uh, from 6 p.m. at night till 6 a.m. in the morning. So that's another way that they can stand uh, near the guard. It's another safe way. Where they would be able to, uh, to be in, in a safe building area. Uh, we also provide a free shuttle that goes back and forth to the D train. We have two shuttles that run. It goes from 191st Street Gate to the Grand Concourse and 188th Street, where the D and the B train operate. We run that again at 8 p.m. to 5 a.m. in the morning. Again, it's driven by security guard. And there's two vans. So the nice thing about it is there will always be a van at that station. So the first van does not leave until the second van. Arrived, so they would have to, they have to sit in there for a couple of minutes until the next van leaves. But it's uh, another nice feature that we have. We also uh, introduced our emergency texting app several years ago. Uh, again, it can be downloaded on any uh, smartphone. Again, free of charge. Uh, it's a nice feature. It, students, we, we realize that students don't like to call sometimes. They like to text. We like to say that it's used for emergencies, but they do use it for other things as well. And it goes back to our security base. It's monitored again 24 hours a day. So As well as the free form text, it also has an urgent assist button. So maybe you can send that text, but you can hit that button. And it has a location services on it, so they would have to be, have, have to be activated. It works similar to find my iPhone, so we call and we'd be able to, uh, to locate where the student is. It also has a couple of pre, uh, predefined messages, uh, such as being followed, a victim of a crime, or having an event of emergency. So that's basically a, pre, a brief overview of the app. Thank you. Next question is for Office of Multicultural Affairs. Can you share a little bit of information about us, how a student may get involved with the office? Uh, hello again, everyone. Uh, so the number of ways that students can engage to our office. Um, through training and workshops, we typically train anywhere between 800 and 1,000 students on campus with regards to diversity, equity, and inclusion um, training. Uh, and those students interact with every student. So in particular, some that will interact with incoming students include orientation leaders and resident assistants, as well as commuter assistants, so for the, and ram ram drivers. So for the most part, almost any student that uh, your incoming students will be interacting with will have had some sort of um, diversity, equity, including training from our office, um, as well as workshops that students can attend all year round. We have a number of um, network programs. One is our racial solidarity network, as well as our LGBTQ and allied network of support. Uh, and those are open to the entire Fordham community, where folks um, gather anywhere between uh, over about five hours. It's either split uh, two weeks or in a one-week session. And folks are able to then learn resources and learn more information about um, those particular topics. In terms of direct student engagement, we have our cultural committees. Um, so upperclassmen are our cultural programming coordinators or our program liaisons. Those students were selected in the spring, and are, as I mentioned, are working with us for the summer for some Instagram takeovers and are planning some programming right now. Um, but our committees are um, doing open recruitment right now, and we have a lot of um, first-year students that even joined the committees last year. So uh, cultural programming and things of that nature were things that your students were involved with 
high school or the previous institutions, that's a really good opportunity to dive right into getting involved. Some of our leaders this year were freshmen last year, so um, I think that that had a really significant impact on their experience here. Um, and then we also uh, work with cultural clubs on campus. So while we don't oversee all of the clubs that's through our Office of Student Involvement, a number of cultural clubs work through our office and we, uh, we advise a number of them in terms of overseeing programming and initiatives. And then sort of like wrapping that up, uh, again, as I mentioned, in terms of collaborations, there are a number of collaborations that we have uh, with uh, a number of the different departments here through this programming, whether it's through career conferences, whether it's through mental health, ability, um, gender, sexual orientation, uh, religion, and faith. So we really try to be as intersectional as possible in terms of looking at ways to support students here on campus. And the students really enjoy and um, have a great opportunity uh, to do programming on campus and work with us, um, whether it's through a, a club organization or directly as a student leader. So um, the best place to direct your students to is at Fordham OMA on Instagram. Um, and that's where we share a lot of our information about upcoming programs and leadership opportunities. Thank you. Next question is for health services. Is there a pharmacy on campus? That's another good question. So our offices at both campus have medication on hand that the student um, can purchase. Um, the reason we have a variety of different antibiotics is if, if it, the weather is bad, um, the students can get it right away. They, they, a lot of them choose to be on the medications right away. Um, but yes, we have a lot of over-the-counter medications and we have on-stock um, medication available. Um, we also have a local pharmacy in the area, which I would recommend highly if you Google them, Mount Carmel Pharmacy. Um, they provi pro provide delivery right to their dorm. Um, besides medications, they have over-the-counter products, so if you need some extra Gatorade or fluids or um, bandages, it's short. It's Mount Carmel Pharmacy. And if you have any uh, specific question, please call Health Services. Ask me. I can help you. Um, we have a we provide a lot of different services to the students, which I can't go over entirely here. But if you look at the website, you'll see a lot of the services that we provide. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is for residential life. Can you share a little bit of information about how students choose their housing assignment slash roommate? Okay, so um, our housing application went live for Rose Hill on June 10th, and students were able to go onto that housing application and um, fill it out where they're submitting their um, housing preferences, they rank, they have uh, top 10 choices that they can rank it in, and they also can give a roommate preference if they have one. At that time, sometimes students don't have a roommate preference and find one through these some orientations. And if that is the case, um, they are able to email us and we will note that. Um, we, the students that don't have roommate preferences, we use their lifestyle questions to um, match them up. So we do ask that the students are filling out this housing application and not the parents. <laughs> because sometimes our parents are filling it out wanting their students to be like this, you know, very clean person and everything and, you know, have high expectations for their study habits and then the student gets here and we match them up and the student's like, no, that's not really me. Um, so really, we do ask, we'd rather have the student fill it out, we don't understand sometimes the parents um, like to fill it out. But also, please, from now on, please encourage your students to be checking their Fordham email. That is where we will be sending all of our email correspondence about housing. Um, I find that sometimes students continue to uh, use their personal email or their high school email. Um, we are not emailing it to that. So please encourage them to uh, look at that. And um, their housing assignments will be going out sometime in late July and everything. But if anybody has any questions, Please feel free to email the Res Life account. I do monitor it, and I would be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Thank you. Next question is for Student Financial Services. How does a student sign up for work study? Okay. Um, actually, federal work study would have been part of the student's package. 
Um, you'd have to qualify for that uh, federally uh, in order to get federal work study. They'll have an application on their portal that they'll fill out, and once they're in, once they're here on campus, they'll go through an interview process. For other jobs that are not through federal work study, you can um, get on a waiting list through uh, uh, student employment through our office. But then also, as people have mentioned, there are departments that have jobs. At IT, there's always jobs. Uh, the Ram van, there's always they always need drivers. The pool, the pool is always looking for uh, lifeguards. If any any of the kids are lifeguards, are there? That's a job that is around a lot. So, um, but federal work study so would have had to have qualified for that federally. Thank you. We have time for one last question, and I will uh, open this question up to all the panelists. Going off of the question about work study. Um, are, is, that, uh, is there any information that uh, the panelists would like to share about any other job offerings and opportunities for students to work uh, in the offices represented here today? I can start, please. I can start. Um, so, yes, yeah, so uh, with my department, with the University of Transportation, um, and essentially what we do, like I mentioned earlier, we transport uh, members of the Florida community between our whole camp, between campuses here at Rose Hill and Lincoln Center. Um, and the folks doing the transportation are student drivers. They have, um, and so the jobs that are available um, starting in the fall, um, essentially what they'll do is we'll ask them to work, commit 12 to 16 hours per week. Um, the week starts, we run our service all week long, including the weekends and late nights, so it's very flexible to the student's schedule. Um, for more information on that, they could, a student or yourself could um, reach out to our website, give us a call, or go to our Instagram as well. I'll add to that. So jobs, um, also I encourage you all, your son or daughter, or um, the child that you basically oversee. Really important. Make sure to have them sign up for their Handshake account because Handshake is basically the system that hosts all full-time, all internship, and part-time jobs that are off campus. Um, we encourage your son or daughter, or you know whoever you might oversee. Um, it's really, really important. This is a great opportunity to find part-time jobs. Also, our office hosts um, several positions, which is a student engagement strategist. So the student engagement strategist basically helps our office work with collecting information about where students have gone, outreach to students about um, you know what types of opportunities they've gotten. So collection of information, um, students get paid $18 an hour if they work with our office, um, starting at their first year, and then it basically goes up. Um, of course, we host work study as well um, for students as well in our office. Cody, I can share some as well. In athletics, we have a number of opportunities for students here on campus. Um, from a club perspective, we do have students that we hire as referees, those that have not decided to continue to play the sport but have enough of a knowledge base to be able to serve as a referee for it. Um, our facilities, sports information, and equipment room often hire students through work studies. So does our main office within athletics. Uh, our sports medicine department does as well. That's the one area that is a little bit different than our other areas as uh, typically students that are pre-med that are looking to get into uh, medical school, that are looking into physical therapy. They work closely with our athletic trainers along with our team physicians through Columbia Presbyterian. Uh, a number of our sports, including football and uh, our basketballs, typically have students that are working with them. Uh, outside of that, I would say there's a lot of internship opportunities as well. Uh, to be transparent for myself, that's how I got into college athletics. I worked in college football when I was an undergrad, continued that as I uh, progressed in my professional studies and then ultimately was able to use that to catapult me to pursue this professionally. So oftentimes I talk to students if athletics is something you want to pursue from an administrative perspective, there's a ton of opportunities to get involved with our varsity sports programs or to get involved in some of our areas, much like marketing, sports information, and really get uh, an idea as to what college athletics entails. Thank you. 
I know I also mentioned it briefly before for IT, but you can actually go online to the website at fordham.edu slash itjobs um, and see the kinds of positions that we have available for um, regular undergraduate positions, internships, and also some of those regular undergraduate positions are available for work study. If your student is interested in IT when they go to the student employment office, just have them ask for a job in that um, area and we have so many different positions available um, for either regular hourlies or work studies. So just send your test on these students our way because we can always use them. Uh, yeah, uh, dining also hires students. Um, we do not offer or have the ability to accept a work study position, but we do hire students part time to work um, as interns. So we treat them more as an internship, but it is a paid part time position. Working with our marketing team. So they uh, will assist us with communications through our campus, um, working different events, but also have an opportunity to learn lots about marketing. Communication, creating uh, newsletters, um, social media, things like that. So it is a an opportunity for students not only to earn some money, but to um, gather some useful knowledge and experience working within marketing. And we have very flexible schedules um, and work with we'll that. So I highly recommend that if a student is interested in a position like that, to utilize that same email I mentioned before, ramhealth at fordham.edu. Um, and we can direct the student to the application process for that. All right, thank you again, everybody. And that, unfortunately, is all the time we have today. I'd like to thank the other panel for being here this afternoon. And also thank you.